Ay, ay, ay. Well, I've completely dismantled the, um, the, uh, film stage on this old Revere in hopes that I can figure out what's going on with the film tracking. I just picked up another reel here. Hell Drivers. Death-defying stunts. And it tracked even worse than the, uh, the old Flight 608 film. Um, and I, I did absolutely make sure I left a loop in the top and bottom, or input and output sides, and, uh, what ends up happening is the film loop moves up, 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 up every other frame or so. And, uh, that's what's causing it. See, if you leave the loop on both sides, it actually tracks perfectly, but it starts to skip, and, well, I think I know why. This is the film guide. Actually, this little hole here is where the shutter is. And it's kind of greasy and muddy feeling. And there's a little spring-loaded tensioner against the film right there. That keeps tension on the film. And I'll put my screwdriver there. Right there. It's covered in gunk. So I'm going to clean that off. And, uh, hopefully get to the bottom of this. Also, I found that there was a lot of oil that had seeped out of the bearings. And, uh, yeah, this sucks. This shaft went through as I was pulling off the, the sprocket. And now I've got to open up the other side, which could involve disassembling the entire fucking projector again. I also polished up this one here. This is the, uh, the the movable film guide, and it was also pretty gnarly looking. This is what keeps tension on the film vertically, or like this. It was against it. I'm going to polish up all these parts with Brasso and uh, see what happens. I'm hoping for a roaring success. Okay, I just got finished polishing every single one of these pieces with Brasso. Anyway, um, I think, uh, I think we, uh, if this was a problem, now let me take a, so let's take a look at the, the actual, um, I don't know if they call it the film cleat, or, a little thingy that goes up and down and in and out. Anyway, anyway, but so I watch it run here. Um, clutches off. Okay, so you can see it's doing its normal motions without any problems. It goes in, out, up and down without flaw. So let's take a good look down in the barrel there. So, I'll show you what the dowsing uh, filter looks like, or the, the dowser. When you turn the clutch on, that moves out of the way. You can see, right, you're looking straight at the light bulb right there. Okay, now let's take a look at the shutter as it's rotating. It's got a lot of oil on it. Um, I think some of the oil that I that I threw in there wound up um, getting into the shutter. But that still shouldn't cause tracking issues. If anything, that could cause a fire. Um, I'm being realistic here. But everything is working fine, otherwise. Let's go ahead and reassemble it. Okay, now everything is clean, polished, free of any grunk, grime, or dust. Mainly the film guides and the pressure plate. So we're going to thread up some film and see how she goes. Okay, so I'm going to show you what's happening. I'm still doing it. Let's go ahead and start it up. That's what's happening. And I can't
can't seem to stop it. That's what's happening. I cannot seem to get it to run properly. With or without a service loop of film. Well, let's see how it runs regardless. Okay, so I'm going to leave a good loop on the, on the uh, intake side here. I don't know if there's a problem with the film, or, I mean, if there's an issue with the projector, I don't know what to do about it, because there's not much else that can be done to this projector to make it run any better. There are no other adjustments. It's, it's insane. But what's happening is it's taking it up faster than it can spit it back out again. So, let's start it up again. To find a good spot to project against here. And I can see it's up to its same old trick. Why is it doing that? Actually, that does look better. Alright, now, I'm looking at it in person, and it's actually looking not too bad. Not like it did before. I mean, it's, yeah, it's really, it's just as bad, I'd have to say. Let's go ahead and run the other film, and I'll show you how bad it really is on that one. Um, but at least at this point, it's somewhat legible, but it still bounces up and down. And as you saw earlier, I couldn't get it to keep a nice loop of film on the, on the output side of the uh, projection deck. As you can see, there's a little bit of film bounce right there. And that's where it's getting its, uh, it's losing its framing right at that point. Okay, we have Pell drivers. We have Pell drivers all threaded through here. Okay. Now let's fire it up and see what happens. Turn the lights off. Okay. And that's the best I can get out of it. Oh shit. That was stupid. Okay, we'll dim the house lights and try to run the damn thing. Actually, this one's not looking as bad as it did. It's actually somewhat viewable. But not perfect. Now, the camera actually stabilizes the film for me, using stability control. So it looks better on camera than it does in person. But at least I can see what's going on this time. I couldn't before. Maybe if I run the film a few times, it'll actually warm it up and... I don't know. Okay, I've identified exactly why this projector is not running properly. The bad news is, I don't think there's anything I can do about it. Let me try to zoom in here. Okay. I'm gonna switch to manual focus. Okay. So you'll notice the, where the film is right here. Um, okay, you see that little metal thing poking out? Well, that's the frame advance um, 
doohickey. <laughs> anyway, what it's supposed to be doing right now is grabbing that hole right there. In fact, I'll move the film down a little bit so it does. Okay, it's supposed to f grab that hole, pull down, pull out. Now, in that time, it's supposed to advance exactly one frame. And then it goes back up and grabs the next um, sprocket, pull down and advance another frame. But as you can clearly see, either the film has stretched or the cam is worn out. That's the only thing I can think of. If the cam is worn out, it won't move it up enough, or it won't move it down enough, or vice versa. So, what do we do about this? I really don't know. I'm not sure if it's because, again, if the film is stretching. Now, here's um, the, the framing knob, which moves that position up or down. Okay, we'll move it up for now. Let's see, watch what happens. Be able to do the exact same thing. Oh, wait, it almost hits it. Almost. Okay. Move the framer up a little bit there. Almost hits, but totally misses. So that is why this projector can't stay in time, or it won't stay lined up. Now, if I close the cleat down, or the clamp down here, you can see that it's pushing that plate away to release tension, pulls the film down one. No way, it's working. See, it's it's not it's not hitting it every time. It moves it a little bit, and I came to this conclusion because as I was trying to run a film through it, I noticed that if I put pressure on this plate here, it actually moves the film down and it starts to stay in frame. The problem with that is it's not actually pulling in the sprockets or the um, you know what I mean it's not pulling in, in the uh, the film holes it's actually pulling the film by hit by rubbing up against it and dragging it down and that is not a permanent solution that is a temporary solution so what do we do about this I'm asking your advice I don't know what to do for this projector is it the film or is it the projector that's worn out dilemma of the day. So I'll uh, show you again. Now this is what the framer pulled up slightly. Pulls down, goes up, misses. Now if there's tension on the film, it'll drag it just through uh, friction, or tension against the, um, the plate. But that's not a solution. In fact, we'll go ahead and start the motor. You can see this in action. Now, this is without the film actually being tied to the reel, so we'll see. Actually, it's running quite nicely. Unfortunately, that's not an adequate solution to this problem. We're just dumping film on the floor. But it runs perfectly fine. But you'll notice I can't quite... Oh, I got it framed in this time. I guess it's as good as I'm going to get it.
See, now it's still missing every once in a while. Get that focused in. It is staying pretty well within the frame. Even though this is, again, not a good way to run a film. Just for testing purposes. But you'll also notice that this loop here is growing considerably. Which tells me that it's definitely missing frames. That's that noisy here. So what am I to do? Got all this film on the floor. I'm now going to have to hand roll. Okay, I just loaded the other reel, um, the uh, Flight 609 reel, which seems to run better on this projector. Now let's take a look at how it lines up. Okay, we're going to manually advance it. Doesn't want to grab the film. Now with the, with the clamp down, it's not moving it at all. All right. We're in a hole. There we go. Lost it. Put the film this direction there. It's being a little more troublesome. It's not moving the film at all. It's being completely unco uncooperative. So, yeah, there's that. Now, why is it doing this to me? All right, let's try that. Well, I, I can't get this film to cooperate with me. Um, but it's really no different. I mean, it still does not grab the film correctly. And I can't think of why it would do that. Um, everything is working as it should. Um, otherwise, now I'm going to run this film with the take up reel disconnected. Actually does look much better, but it's still skipping frame. Definitely skipping frame. If 
by pull on the film. So the tension on the pickup seems to run a little smoother, stabler, much more stable. I'm going to release my finger, you know. There doesn't seem to be much I can do to fix this problem. But if you have the tension just right, you can get it to run pretty well, pretty smoothly. So. Oh, freaking well. Okay, after reading a few articles online, I'll try to find the website I, I, uh, I got this from. But I didn't realize that you have to lubricate 8mm film, or, or any film for that matter, with silicone prior to running it. Um, so, people don't, many people don't realize how many household products actually contain silicone. Um, a couple of them in, in, in this order are Armor All and similar products. And um, Lemon Pledge. <laughs> so, I'm going to be using this No More Cracks and Peels stuff, which is designed for automotive interiors, and a clean, lint-free um, microfiber cloth. I'm going to spray the cloth liberally with silicone spray, which is watermelon scented. And I'm going to run the film, wind it back up onto the reel at low speed, and uh, wish me luck. Oh, that's too fast. There we go. And then I'm going to wind it back to remove any excess silicone. But to prevent the cloth from going dry, periodically re wet it here. Camera is rolling, right? Yeah, good. As the uh, take up reel gets larger, the motor is having a harder time pulling this film through. That's kind of to be expected, though. So now we're going to whoop. We're going to. Switch the reels back, run it through on a dry side of the cloth, and see what happens. Okay, so I've greased the hell out of my film, and now it smells like watermelons, and it still doesn't run. So, if nothing else, I think I proved the point. Don't mess with the U.S. I mean, the film is stretched. That's the problem. It's gotta be it.